guys, welcome back to another Oily Skin Diaries foundation review. Today it is all about something new from CoverGirl, new to the drugstore. It is the CoverGirl, Co <laughs> good start, CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. If you missed it, I did a whole What's New at the Drugstore week, which will be linked down below. New things from L'Oreal, Rimmel, and of course, all of the latest products from CoverGirl. So if you'd like to see those in action, that will all be linked down below. And as always, I will have timestamps down below if you're kind of looking to skip ahead in the review because I know when I'm looking up a foundation review, whether I want to know my shade, whatever it may be, if I'm like 17 minutes in and nobody has applied anything to their face and they haven't mentioned their shade, I'm annoyed. So that will be linked down below along with blog posts that swatch this foundation next to some CoverGirl foundations and next to some more popular foundations if you're trying to figure out your shade. In addition to that, I will have some shades that I am in popular foundations listed down below. So today we're going to be doing a wear test, flash photo test. I'll be showing you it in natural light. And because there's so many shades in this foundation, I figured I would do some face swatches as well. That may give you a better indication of where you may end up in the shade range. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So this foundation is quite new and as I mentioned there's a huge shade range here. There are 40 different shades in the range and when I went to the launch party for this they mentioned that it was the first drugstore brand I guess in North America to launch 40 shades at once because they said we're releasing something new we want everybody to be able to try it which I think is great to see. I've always been a huge fan of CoverGirl foundations so I'll link to some previous reviews down below but I was really excited that this one said it was matte and it also said it has such a great shade range because Although I do love the CoverGirl foundations, some of them weren't necessarily as warm as I would have liked them to be. So depending on where you pick this up, this is going to retail anywhere in between like $10 to $15. Of course, it's going to vary store to store and country to country, but you're getting it in a nice glass bottle and CoverGirl has done some rebranding, which I think looks really good, much sleeker than what it previously did. You're getting a full fluid ounce in here, which is the average size of a foundation and it has a pump, which I'm always happy to see. This is the exact same packaging as the CoverGirl 3-in-1, um, but it just has a little bit of different coloring on there. So as I mentioned, it does come in 40 shades. It's kind of divided between light, medium, tan, and deep, which is exciting. That makes it a little bit easier to find your shade, but at the same time, it's almost daunting because there's so many shades and so many undertones. So something to be definitely um, kind of aware of is that although the shade may get um, higher in number, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a deeper shade. It also has a lot to do with undertones. So hopefully that will kind of show you a little bit in my face swatches today that you can see the differences in undertones. For me, um, I ended up at a warm shade. So I'm going to be wearing T30 Warm Honey. I tried a bunch of different shades and this was definitely the one that I was happiest with. This foundation claims to be a comfort matte, which is definitely the most kind of hip term when it comes to foundations. Medium to full coverage. It says it's a comfort comfortable and transfer proof, which I figured we would test today. I, I mentioned this in my other CoverGirl video, but if you're putting on a transfer proof foundation, but then you put bronzer and highlight and a bunch of other stuff on top of it, I, I don't necessarily think that it's going to be transfer proof, but some will of course be better than others. So we'll do a little test of that today, but let's just go ahead and get into the application. And by application, I mean face swatches. So this first one here, this is T15, which I kind of thought I was going to be, and I did make this work. It's the second lightest of the warm category when it comes to the tan shades. Then this is T20, which is the next shade up, but it has more pink in it because this one is deemed to be a cool shade. And then next here we have T30, which is what I ended up going with. This one is in the shade Warm Honey and it's just a much better match. At first I thought that this was good, but then I realized that this one was actually much better. So you can see that this one is more pink. This one is definitely a little more orange, the T15 in my opinion. And then this one has a more of like a golden-y tone, which is what I generally go for. So over here, this one is T40, and this is a neutral. And then T50 is also a neutral. I don't know if this is even really helpful to you. Like you, there's such slight differences in the undertones, which I think is actually really good because sometimes a shade can match you, but the undertone can't. And that can be really telling. So you can see that these look a little bit more cool tone. I think I could make T40 work potentially. And then lastly, this is T60, which is the next in the warmest. So it goes T30 is warm and then T60 is warm and then all in between are not warm. So again, I thought I was T60, then I thought I was T15, but I settled on T30, which is right here. So now moving into actual application, 
like I mentioned, using T30, and I've primed this half of my face with their new pore minimizing primer. I'm using a brush, I've used a brush and a sponge. Brush gives me more coverage, but it works with a sponge too. And like I mentioned in the face swatches, there's such subtle differences that it's almost a blessing and a curse that there's so many shades because it can be a little bit like kind of finicky to figure out what your shade is. Um, but this one was definitely the best match for me and something that I definitely want to point out to my Canadian subscribers, I'm, I, I don't know if this totally applies in the US um, because you do have so many good online options as well to pick up the foundation there, but when you go to buy this in store, it may be a bit of a hassle because um, although they have 40 shades available, it's up to the Walmarts, the Shoppers Drug Marts, the Rexalls, Loblaws, whoever it may be, to decide what shades they want to put in store. So I know it would be kind of your first thought to go uh, and complain to CoverGirl, but you really need to complain to your actual retailer because those are the people who are deciding what goes on the shelves in their stores because they only have so much shelf space. And that's something I only learned like this year is um, in, in working with brands a little bit closer and complaining to them and saying, hey, um, I know you have my shade, so why can't I find it in store? Um, it's the retailers because they're putting out what they think is going to sell the most. And for, in my experience in Toronto, at least, um, it doesn't seem to, to change much neighborhood by neighborhood. Um, everybody just kind of sells the same shades and new, new products will come out and you can't find the deeper shades a lot of the time. I don't know if it counts, if it's the same for the lighter shades, you tell me, but it's always kind of like the lighter to middle shades is what it looks like. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind, which is always disappointing um, because it's great to have 40 shades, but in Canada, we have a very hard time finding all 40 shades. So as you can see, I find this to be a very good color match blends out really nicely. I wouldn't consider this full myself in comparison to the full options that we have out there now, but I think it's a nice strong medium. It's buildable, it's blendable, there's no real scent to it. Kind of smells like a CoverGirl foundation. So I've given the foundation some time to set before we did this transfer proof test. In my opinion, once anything gets oily on my skin and if I'm wearing anything besides just a foundation, I don't see how it could be completely transfer proof, but I always appreciate something that's going to stick on my skin a little bit better. So I did want to give it some time to set. While I did that, I did take some photos. I thought it looked incredible in my studio lighting here. Looks really natural on the skin. It also feels really natural. I know that I might be kind of spoiling it, but I find that when I've been wearing this throughout the day, I'll kind of forget that I'm wearing makeup and even just to touch my face, it does feel incredibly natural on the skin. Even after I've powdered it, it just feels super, super lightweight. But at the same time, it has that secureness that I've mentioned in previous reviews that makes it feel really comfortable to wear when you have oily skin because it doesn't feel like things are slipping and sliding around. So I also thought it looked really, really good in my flash photo test. I turned off all the lights that I have here around me and I thought that it looked really good. I didn't see any major flashback. It just seemed to look almost just as good as it did in natural light. Of course, I'm not wearing any bronzer or anything like that, so that's definitely something to keep in mind, but I thought that it looked really good. So for the transfer proof test, I have blotting paper here, so I thought that we would just blot first and see what happened. I mean, I just put it on, but even if I just put it on, I'm going to be able to remove foundation if there is any excess there, and that way we can test what it looks like. So as you can see, there is a little bit of transfer here, but very, very minimal. And that is of course really kind of pressing it into my skin. But then I thought I would do a more realistic test. Although my boyfriend is not home, I figured I would take one of his t-shirts, wrap it around a pillow, and we will hug it and see what happens because I definitely get makeup on his shirts all the time. So, oh my God, so glad you're home from work. I missed you. I don't think I see anything. Let me try Try this side. This is an old shirt of his, by the way. It's for, it's for a good cause. I think I see, this shirt's like already dirty, so it's like kind of hard to tell. It's one of his like crappy old white shirts. <laughs> I don't think I see anything coming off on it. It looks pretty good. I mean, I've never tried this with another foundation, so it's kind of hard to tell. But one thing they do do, if you watch their ads, they have um, put foundation on someone's wrist and then they're rubbing it up against a shirt to show how transfer proof it is. So I've actually foundationed this wrist. If you can tell, they look quite different. This one is much more smooth and even. So I kind of blended it out with a brush and I figured we would wipe it up against the shirt because that to me just seems 
impossible. Um, and I haven't let it set for, I mean, it's probably only been about five minutes, but let's just kind of pat it first. So nothing coming off. Nothing yet. So let's try just a light rub, a little. Yeah, I got a little bit there, if you can tell. And then let's try a more substantial rub. Huh, so I got a little bit, but nothing horrible. So I will say, I think it look, I think it looks really good. I mean, I don't have anything to compare it to because I haven't tested other foundations this way. But what I can say from my own personal experience is that it does feel really lightweight. It does feel very skin-like. And when I've touched my face, like I've, I've caught myself touching my face, kind of forgetting that I'm wearing makeup, which I think is a really good indicator of how it actually kind of sets on the skin. So I think it looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my makeup though, and then I will be right back. I'm back with a full face of makeup. If you're curious about what I'm wearing, as always, it will be listed down below. If also started listing what's in my hair because I'm getting questions about that and I generally list what is on my nails as well. Uh, I did just film a look with the new Urban Decay Born to Run palette so that will be listed down below and I plan to use this in another upcoming video if you're curious. I also plan to review the ColourPop foundation as soon as it comes here which can be a little bit lengthy sometimes getting that to Canada but anyways really really love how this foundation looks. I forgot to mention the primed side does look ever so slightly more smooth than the unprimed side and so so far I think things look great. So I'm gonna go ahead and wear this for a few hours and I will check back with you in some natural lighting. Coming to you with my midday check-in. I just woke up Rue and she's like, why, why do you always have to do this? But I wanted to check in in some natural light. This way you can see what it looks like and it may give you a more accurate representation of the color and um, just how it kind of looks on the skin. I think it looks really good. I haven't blotted, I haven't powdered. It is so humid today. There's a heat warning. There was just a huge thunderstorm. My apartment is really warm, but I haven't been outside. So I can't say that it's like necessarily thunderstorm proof, but I think it's holding up really well. So I'm gonna wear it for uh, a few more hours and then I'll come back to you at the end of the day with my final thoughts. And we're back. As you can see, I have a little bit of sheen to my skin, partially because I have oily skin and partially because it is like, a million degrees outside today so a little bit of it is sweat if I'm being honest but let's do a little bit of blotting just to remove the oil and then I'll show you the what the um, what this looks like as well after I blot so if you can see if that doesn't gross you out too much there's really actually not too much foundation mostly it's just oil and I am gonna re powder a little bit but overall I think that this looks so good i mean i'm not really surprised i've been wearing this on and off for about two weeks now testing it out i don't feel like it oxidizes i don't feel like it moves around it feels really comfortable on the skin keeps my oils at bay looks really good on the skin good shade match it's affordable it's uh readily available ish depending on who you are and where you live but i'm really really impressed if you are looking for my stamp of approval on this foundation i absolutely give it two thumbs up to the point where it's about just after six o'clock now and i think um, i actually have an event that i'm going to at seven and it is very rare that i wear my makeup from like 8 a.m to an event at seven unless i absolutely have to normally i'll like wash my face and start over but i feel comfortable enough that i'm just gonna touch up my blush and bronzer a little bit maybe put on some wing liner and just spray my face down with a setting spray or a primer water or something like that just to freshen things up so I think that really goes to speak to how much I like this foundation that I will continue to wear it for another two or three hours the only reason I'm not kind of continuing my foundation review is because I live in a 600 square foot apartment and my boyfriend's desk is right here and he's gonna want to get at his desk while I'm out of the house <laughs> so the lights have to come down but otherwise I think that this is an absolutely great foundation very very high marks from me. Uh, as always, the prime side versus the unprimed side, I don't see a huge difference, although I do like that pore filling primer. I do feel like it kind of smooths the skin out a little bit. If you have a more combination skin type, I think you'll like this. As for somebody with uh, dry skin, I'm not totally sure. It is matte, but it's not a super tight matte. So as always, let me know if you have tried this foundation down below, but I'm really, really liking it. So let me know if you plan on picking it up. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SamanthaJaneYT. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.